we're trying to give a, people a different settlement path altogether. Hamilton's Reserve is a financial services company on the edge of innovation. And we have the team here today to give us their plans with Hedera. Welcome, guys. Hi. I'm, hi, Brandon. Great to meet you. Likewise, likewise. So before we get into your plans around Hedera, can you talk about when and how Hamilton's Reserve started and your business to this point? Sure. So about a year ago, um, we were, Ken and I were presented with a question. You know, uh, and Ken had been trading in the crypto markets quite quite a bit. And the question came from his brother, said, you know, how can I take the crypto I've got and actually pay for something? How can I use this thing? And of course, Ken and I have a long history in the payments industry. And we kind of thought, well, that's an interesting question. <laughs> that's a good point. Um, and, and we looked at we looked at it and we said, you know, and, and that's really the genesis of how we came up with this. And say, well, how could we enact an immediate payment? Um, of crypto, of any kind of crypto at the cash register, which is a very, and, and most people don't understand what happens when you swipe a card at a cash register and we do. And we thought, okay. So we put our heads together and, and came up with a method to be essentially be able to do that is to do um, instantly leverage cre- uh, crypto at the cash register, a way to fund merchants and do, you know, basically not have to change the way the world does payments today, but incorporate crypto into it. Because mm-hmm. quite frankly, right now, I'm trying to do a crypto payment, liquidating, do all sorts of different things. And it's a lot of multi-steps. Sure. Um, and it's not accessible to the average merchant or the average consumer. Um, but you know, as we progressed through the year, we started to realize that you know, the real underlying business problem is you know, there are a lot of crypto curious people now. It's mm-hmm. gone from the initial heydays and then the, you know, the 17 up and down. And now it seems to be really taking root, not just within crypto enthusiasts, but across the board. And there's a lot of crypto curious banks with no strategy. And we looked and we said, well, if we, based on what we've kind of devised, is, is there a way we can create a platform that could make any bank, and we're looking really at the sort of the the, the 5,000 smaller banks and the other 5,000 credit unions say, is there something we can do to give them a modern bank account structure that will allow people to incorporate crypto into their everyday things, give them a modern bank card experience? Um, and really more importantly, because this is the knowledge we've retained um, over the years in the payment space, in the UN- United States specifically, there's a real challenge out there with respect to the cost and the time it takes to do payments. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, I think the number is around $350 billion is taken off the table by the payment networks every year in the United States. It's a particularly more prominent in the United States, but it's also the fact that it takes 24 to 72 hours to, to settle those payments. I mean, that, well, basically what we're doing is we can shut that down to zero on both accounts. Um, and that's a big benefit. Um, so, you know, it's a better service benefit for a bank um, it, and, and the like, but, that's the other value proposition we're coming to the table. And, and the reason I think we're, we're so enamored with going after as a platform is because that's the only way for us to really scale, to have a reach. Um, the, you know, the people moving assets to crypto is a real, can be potentially hazardous to a bank because it'll move deposits out of their lending sphere. So they'll lose net interest income if they don't have their deposits. And if people, you know, if one bank has it, People start moving their money. They got to respond or their business starts to shrink. So um, we sort of been molding our value proposition over the last year. Um, and the reason we, we gravitated to Hedera, and this is really important, is the real challenge is, you know, I can't wait 10 minutes, 40 minutes for a blockchain, <laughs> Bitcoin transaction to settle. We need something that's like, boom. Mm-hmm. And we evaluated all the different technologies for, uh, for the settlement side, because this is all about settlement. The whole value is in how you settle things. And we needed something that would resolve in a very lightweight fashion, very quickly, very securely. And quite frankly, the fact, you know, the proprietary nature of Hedera is very interesting for us in the banking realm Mm -hmm. because it really creates a very tight ecosystem that we can build upon. And it's, and that's why we're leveraging the Hedera um, uh, hash graph is for this, for the back end settlement processes because we feel that that's the only way we can get the speed and match it up to what's required on the other side, which is, you know, as you well know, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, their their transaction volumes, their TPS is off the charts. We mm-hmm. need to 
we need to match two sides of an equation. We can't have one going 30 miles an hour and the other one going 2000 miles an hour. Sure. So, and that's where Hedera brings the speed map and, and helps us mm -hmm. with, with mediating that difference point. So that's really why, how we, how we've come to this point uh, with our business. Yeah. I've, I've heard that Visa usually does between two and 4,000 transactions per second, which we could handle right now. Uh, but you know, when it, it peaks out on, you know, Black Friday, I think it's, it, gets up to 40,000 transactions per second. And I'm sure when we, we lift our, our uh, um, the throttle, we'll be able to handle that. And then, of course, Hedera is going to be able to shard and all that kind of stuff to continuously scale to, to whatever level we need. Right. So you've kind of already touched this, but you know, I, I'd like to get into the how, and I'll direct this when it can. So how are you planning on leveraging Hedera to, to improve your business? Um, the, the way that we're going to use the, the Hedera hash graph is we have a two, like Jeff said, we have a two tiered kind of chicken egg. I won't call it a problem. It's just a challenge is that we have to get you and you could be customer 01, you personally, but you generically, you have to use our card. That's going to be a challenge. And then we have to get the merchant. And if it's McDonald's, that's going to be a giant challenge, but it could be the coffee shop down the street from me, or it could be the bookstore around the corner to agree to have a merchant settlement account with us. So if those two things are in place, now when you swipe our card through a traditional cash register, or even if you enter it into a website, we'll grab that data packet. And instead of sending it to all the different nodes that exist in the payment channel, Again, the analogy I use there is it's like Uber, where there used to be a dispatcher and there used to be a uh, cab company and a medallion owner and a city tax. And if you gave the cab driver 10 bucks, maybe he netted two. Mm. So if you give McDonald's 10 bucks, maybe they net 950 because the other 50 cents is just going to get eaten by all these intermediaries that are between you and McDonald's and mm -hmm. they're, and as Jeff said, they're going to wait 72 hours to get that 950. Mm -hmm. But if they have an, a merchant account with us and you take our card in, we'll grab the um, signal. It's called an ISO 8583 message. So that's a little bit of geek speak for anybody that wants some geek speak. That's the language of the payment network. And we will, bridge that and, and we like to call ourselves bridging the cash registers to the blockchains um, and and we'll essentially hijack it and bypass all these middle people and we'll move the money as soon as we see that you have ten dollars worth of crypto in your account and we don't care if it's bitcoin or dogecoin or eth we don't care what you have We'll wrap it right away with a smart contract using your technology. And essentially, we've now put that in escrow. Mm -hmm. We've frozen that, right? And we'll send McDonald's 10 bucks immediately. And we can send it, again, over the hash graph. And we, or if they're in our bank, we'll just do a bank-to-bank -bank settlement with them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's up to them. You know, if they don't want to change banks, we'll just move it over the Hedera network. And, and so the, the benefit to them is pretty obvious. I mean, they save the interchange and they also save the time. The, the benefit to you as the consumer is now you've paid for your hamburger, your fries and your milkshake. You owe us 10 bucks. We owe McDonald's 10 bucks. We've already settled it. So they're yeah. paid. And now if you take 30 days to pay us, great, we're happy. And we'll take $10 fiat. We'll take $10 crypto. We don't care. You just sure. settle your bill. We unwrap it and the contract goes away. If you take 60, 90, 120 days, we're going to charge you interest, but we're not going to charge you 26% interest. We're going to charge you something like 10% interest mm -hmm. because we have a collateralized loan. And so the other analogy that I like to use a lot is we think of your crypto asset as if it were a home equity loan. Sure. And we're doing it on the fly. And, and the beauty of that is that 
we're not really concerned about the volatility because that's the next question that you'd probably ask me. Um, if Bitcoin goes from 40 to 30 in a day, which you know would be a pretty crazy swing, we're not going to have our loan to value ratio set where we're on the threshold of being upside down. And even if we are upside down, we're still in a better position. So now let's say we have 89 cents on a dollar covered. We're still in a better position than your bank is when they give you an unsecured credit line sure. and you go bankrupt and they get zero. So we'll have credit risk management and the loan to value ratio that people can get on their crypto assets will vary depending on the, their FICO score and all the traditional ways that banks evaluate how much credit you should get. And, you know, another example that, that we use is your air conditioner goes out and you call the air conditioning guy and he comes out to your house and he says, I got bad news for you. It's not just leaking. Uh, we're not leaking free on, you know, you're, you're, the motor's blown and we got to replace the whole unit and it's going to be 2000 bucks. And maybe you've got a thousand dollars cash in your cash account, but you got 8,000 in your crypto account. So no problem. We just leverage the 8,000 in crypto. We loan you two grand on the spot. It could be uh, a buy now, pay later plan where you, you make 12 payments over a year and it's interest free. And if you miss one, you know, then you have to pay interest. The traditional buy now, pay later loan. Or um, it's just a straight $2,000 advance and you pay it in four chunks or however you want, you decide how you comfortably can pay that unexpected expense off. But because you've been saving crypto, you now have something to leverage to get that air conditioner yeah. fixed right away. So I don't well, know if that answers your question exactly it, on the Hedera well, side. But I, I think the short summary is we're using the smart Hedera smart contracts to encapsulate yeah. all that credit information in, in terms of that, those credit parameters. Yeah. So we're essentially managing a credit program over a debit rail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, that, and also Visa and MasterCard yeah. charge less on the debit rail than they do on the credit rail. Sure. Yes. I've noticed that. Yep. And that, that was one of the things that I actually came into this uh, interview not really knowing if this was like a superficial thing if it, because a lot of those cards are, they're just using all their traditional rails and they're not actually using the crypto service. They're, they're just, right. yeah, but you're actually using the smart contract service. It's, it's, uh, it, we're it's much more cleave, integrated. Yeah. Right. And we're trying to cleave transactions. We're trying to give a, people a different settlement path altogether. Now, we're not trying to replace it lock stock right out the gate. That's an impossible task. The merchants tried to do that 10, 10 12 years ago with something called MCX, but they tried to change the whole consumer experience, the technologies that you'd have to deal with at the cash register. And that's a non-starter. Mm -hmm. So what we've got, we've got a very special relationship with one of the network partners that allows us to do certain things on that debit rail where we're actually truly moving the settlement path where we have control, like Ken said, if we've got a cardholder on one hand and a participating merchant on the other, they can put our little API and think of like a Stripe API. Mm -hmm. And they can say, when our card shows up, we can automatically redirect those transactions now. Now, if it doesn't, if it's not our, you know, if it's if it's not a participating merchant, our card still works and all that crypto functionality does, but we also make that secondary piece where we can hop the transaction through a much lower cost settlement process. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So how can the Hedera community help and get involved now? Well, you know, what's interesting, Brandon. What we're doing is we, we've struck up a relationship with a company called Crowdbotics in New York. And there'll be more press about this as well. We're really trying to get our platform modularized so that anyone building any kind of new app can plug this payment capability in card capability. So anyone who's doing applications and looking for a payment facility or you know, anyone in the Adara community building apps that require some form of financial settlement, mm -hmm. we might be a very interesting way. Like, I don't know, maybe you're trying to distribute power or do something weird in the solar marketplace. I don't know, whatever it could be. Sure. And we need a payment facility. We're trying to get ourselves positioned to say, look, we're a SNAP component. We work on the same technology foundation. You know, we're just open to discussions basically, because we think if we do that, that's how we'll propagate both the Hedera network as well as other people's capabilities that they're trying to build on your network as well. 
Well, but really, stuff. really, the two um, communities that need to get, well, there are three, but the two that are critical are the merchants. So let's just go from the ridiculous to the sublime. Um, we would want Amazon to say, hey, we take in a trillion dollars worth of credit card transactions every year. It would save us $30 billion to do this. <laughs> Right. You know, so, you so we need program. somebody we need somebody like that to get behind it. But it's just as good to have a like Jess said, a consortium of restaurants who say, boy, you know, that extra three percent we pay at the restaurant is really killing us. So, yeah. you know, all these restaurants agree we're in this consortium. If you pay with this card, you're going to get a good discount yeah. on your meal or or a low. Better. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Or, or a low margin business like grocery stores, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Correct. And, correct. And, and that's Amazon too, by the way, which yeah. is also scary. So uh, <laughs> another thought in, this, in a similar vein is, is that we also need like small banks, like your local credit union or, you know, the branch bank across the street from you, where they're interested in helping their clients get into the crypto market, but they haven't a clue how to do that. In fact, mm -hmm. we were on the phone last night with someone that's helping us with our redo of our web. We're doing a web design. So most of your clients that watch this video and, and go watch our website will say, man, that website sucks. We're fixing it. Mm -hmm. um, but but the I asked the web designer if she had a clue how to go buy $100 worth of Bitcoin. And she was like literally clueless. She yeah. couldn't even articulate step one. Like step one, I go find an exchange. And step mm -hmm. two, I have to go do KYC and AML and blah, blah, blah. We were like, well, what if you went to your bank and they said, here's a brand new bank card and it's preloaded with $10 worth of Bitcoin. You don't have to do anything. It's just there. Yeah. When you look at your balance, you'll see that you have $1,000 worth of fiat and you have $10 worth of Bitcoin. Sure. Go spend it, go invest it, go learn about it. You're crypto curious, you're crypto enabled. Yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. So I just wanted a quick introduction from you guys yeah. today and you did a fantastic job. Is there anything else you'd like to pass on before we let you go? I actually do have a question for you. Sure, go ahead. Shoot. Uh, I was reading an article on The Verge last night about uh, the bridges that exist and how they create a particular vulnerability because the bad guys are no longer going after the exchanges and they're no longer going after the blockchains. They're going after the bridges because the bridges are, it's easier to blow up a bridge than it is to break into a vault. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just curious from your perspective, what Hedera brings to that party. Well, uh, Hedera is the trust layer of the internet. There's all kinds of things that they could do to, to, uh, add trust to, to those transactions. Uh, I'm certainly not the expert, uh, but we do have an expert um, in the ecosystem. Uh, it's called Hashport. Uh, they're the okay. main bridge within Hedera, and Great. I can certainly try to get the answer for you. I wrote, I, I wrote Sergey an email and asked him the same question. So, Well, yeah. we'll, we'll certainly try to find out for you. Guys, okay. thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate your time. Thanks. And we appreciate yours.